there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. <laughs> right, we are off. What are you living in? What are you living in? It could be a skull from boiling right. water. Horrible. Oh, sausage. Right now, there are dogs that need help. You all right, Sean? He's having a fit. We suspect his death. And there are heroes who are dedicated to saving them. I don't want to leave any animal in there. You're alive, why are you, aren't you? <laughs> Transforming their lives. I want to give them plenty of praise as well. Give him a lad, give him a boy. She's been born with eyelids that turn inside out and then they start to rub. Finding them forever homes. They love chasing the ball, don't they? In a way, I think he's my guardian angel. Aren't you, mate? My guardian angel in disguise, you are. Giving our four-legged best friends a second chance makes it all worthwhile. To see them now acting like proper puppies is just lovely. They are Ooh. the dog rescuers. I love my job. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the two-part Dog Rescuers special. In the show, we'll see the huge amount of work involved in a big investigation and learn how inspectors work closely with specialist vets and the police to ensure animal welfare laws are enforced. And we've also got Sharpay Anna here, who needed some specialist care of her own. Didn't you? Are you keen to go? She's Coming up. We should have put me uh, rubber gloves on now. Inspector Lindsay Taylor gets down and dirty as she rescues four dogs from a squalid house. I don't want to leave any animal in there. We catch up with Mogwai and Yoda, two abandoned pups who captured our hearts last series. They were basically uh, collapsed when I saw them. Didn't really know if they were going to survive. And thanks to eye surgery, Anna the Sharpay's life is about to change for the better. She's been born with eyelids that turn inside out, and that's constantly painful, constantly irritable. Ugh, all this traffic. It's mid-morning in Lancashire. And Inspector Lindsay Taylor is on her way to a house that's been a concern for a couple of months. There have been reports of several dogs living in filthy conditions. We've been to the property a few times previously and have got no reply. Curtains are always drawn together. Then last week I received some information and there was a photograph of inside the property. The conditions were appalling. If there are animals that are in that property living in them conditions, we need to get in there pretty quickly. Based on this information, the police have issued a warrant for entry to the house. Lindsay also has the backup of vet Sean Taylor, who will assess the conditions and the dogs. Hi, Sean. You all right? Yes, are you? Yeah, not bad, thanks. Good. Uh, thanks for coming. Okay. I think we might need suits possibly for this job. Okay. Um, so if we get kitted up and wait for the police to yeah, come. See you in there. Yeah. And then. Uh, okay. See what we find. Yeah. I think when I've got to the point where I'm putting a protective suit on, I already know it's going to be quite bad. Not something you look forward to, but then at the same time you're eager to get in there because you want to get the, the dogs out of there as quickly as possible, so you do what you need to do. As well as looking out for the dogs, Lindsay and Sean need to be prepared to gather evidence to help build a case. I'm there to ensure that the dogs that are within that environment um, have uh, their needs met and that uh, none of them are suffering unnecessarily. Police, they have a warrant um, to gain entry, but we're going to just try and knock on the door, see if he answers. Till the police open that door for us and say, right, um, you're in, we, we just never know what to expect. Can't really see in the property. Okay. Curtains are closed and so on. They clearly don't want anybody looking in. But they don't need to be inside to know there's something grim waiting for them. We've got a trail of faeces coming out from the front door to his car. 
there already is quite a, a smell around the property. It's been a few days since Lindsay was last here and got no reply. This time, the police are with her to help her gain access. Are you going to answer the door? If you don't answer, if you don't answer the door, we'll come and send you The occupant eventually opens the door. You're not coming. Let's go inside. Familiar smell is starting to ooze. <laughs> I can smell it already. I'm telling you now, they're coming in. Despite protests from the occupant, Sean and Lindsay make their way inside, supported by the police. And it looks as bad as it smells. <sighs> They've been told to expect three or four dogs, but at first sight, there's just one. Hello, sweetie. Hello, sweetie. We should have put me uh, rubber gloves on now. I'm just going to look upstairs, Sean, just see if that barking's coming from upstairs. And sure enough, there are more dogs on the first floor. What have right. we got up here? One in there, Linz. One in there. And one in that one. It seems the three dogs are being kept in separate rooms. So this, do we know what room this is? Is this just a bedroom? Front bedroom. Yeah. Front bedroom. Yeah. Right, sweetie, let's just take... <laughs> See who we've got in there. Don't come out, sweetie. Each dog has been shut in alone. The, bedroom. the back bedroom. Yeah. Right, it's a quick picture, sweetie, so we know who's in where. When I go into an address, first thing I want to do is just quickly go around and just see what the situation is for each dog. Bruce, come on. We've got to do it properly, um, and that means collecting the evidence and collecting it in the right way as well. So it wasn't done right, and the courts then awarded the dogs back to that owner that had put them in such a situation to start with. Yeah, it'd be pretty heartbreaking, really. Yeah, right, that's the darker one in the bathroom. Are you all right, sweeties? We're going to get you out soon, promise. Oh. The dogs have been using the floor as a toilet, and the stench is overpowering. Oh. <coughs> In an environment which is in intensely unhygienic, we get a lot of ammonia. And the ammonia very, very quickly, and I'm talking now within probably two to three minutes of being in such an environment, starts to irritate your throat and almost a burning sensation within the nose and the eyes. And that is something, again, that's influenced the animals too. Wow. Make my eyes water. <laughs> and the dog is locked in there and it can't escape that. That's something from a horror film, isn't it? Oh. The silence of the lambs. Oh, God. I think I need some fresh air. And she's not the only one. I can only do stints of about 10 minutes in there. Yeah. You need to come out and just clear your lungs back out of all the crap. I'm probably quite close to being sick in there then. Um, just, yeah, I'm not, I'm not feeling my best at the moment. Just a few minutes inside has made Lindsay feel ill, so how unbearable must it be for those poor dogs? The floor is actually a good three to four inches of, of mouldy dog faeces. The only room that's not actually got anything in it is the room that he's living in himself, but the, the rooms that the dogs are in are absolutely shocking. The decision on whether the dogs need to be removed is an easy one. Oh, we're taking these today, without a doubt. I don't want to leave any animal in there. With conditions this hazardous and unhygienic, getting the dogs out is now a matter of urgency. In Lancashire, Inspector Lindsay Taylor is about to rescue four dogs being kept in squalid conditions. We haven't managed to check the dogs yet. We've just looked at the environment. It's one of the worst that I've been in. It's a complete mess in there. The occupant of the house is refusing to cooperate. What I need to do is ask you some questions under okay. caution. We are going to be removing the dogs today. How do they get on with each other? I'm not telling you nothing. 
OK, it's just it's just, just to know... No do, do we need to keep them separate? No comment. OK. Start taking them out one by one. The occupant may not be offering up any information, but the police have made a discovery. Lindsay, I've just spoke to this woman called... Right. Um, she says that that dog and a white stuffy... Yeah. Apparently, two of the dogs don't belong to the occupant, but to someone else. They, they, they come yeah, in. I've, I've it's, that's we, something we're going to have to sort out. Yeah. If she's the owner of some of these animals, then I have to go and interview her anyway. So just the fact that she's allowed them to be in this environment is an, an offence. Whoever he belongs to, the first dog to be removed is the one that was wandering around downstairs, a large bull breed type called Bruce. Right, I'm going to get a lead for you, sweetie. Goodbye, Bruce. Bruce must be happy to be out in the fresh air. Goodbye, Bruce. Vet Sean Taylor will be giving each dog a quick assessment for any urgent medical issues. Bruce. Have you checked his eyes as well? Yeah, Looks to have a um, bit of conjunctivitis, perhaps. It's a historic thing, it's not recent. It was nothing obvious. No, brilliant, thank you. Good boy, Bruce. Right, pop you in. Oh, good boy. You want me to lead on him? <laughs> he's not too bad. Um, he's dirty, but I'm not surprised from the state of the property that he's come from. Hello. Hello, sweetie. Hello, good queen. Next to come out is Beethoven, the dog that was shut in the front bedroom. Hello, we're going to get you out. Eh? This little terrier cross looks a lot more worried than Bruce. There we go, let's just slide this. You're all right, we're going to get you out. Come on, guys. What's your dog dog? Oh, that room made my eyes water did that one. A bit scary, isn't it? That's all right. yeah. Oh dear. At least we got you out of there. Nervous Beethoven's coat looks rather the worse for wear. Body condition wise, it seems okay. Again, very dirty and smelly. Um, a flea allergy going on, skin condition as well. Oh, Bruce. Hey? Oh dear. Come on, your turn. There we go in there. Oh, good boy. With two dogs safe, it's time to get the next one. And animal collection officer John Greaves has arrived to help. The third dog, Terrier Cross Susie, was shut in a bedroom, if you can call it that. The poor thing has literally been living in her own waste. Just get a couple of pictures. <laughs> Oh, good girl. Susie's coat also doesn't look too healthy. Oh, you don't need to be nervous now. I'll get you somewhere better. She's quite timid. Um, the second dog that we got out was, was very timid as well. And I would imagine they're not, just not being socialised. With Susie safe in the van, there's just one dog left. Terrier Cross Magic. Right, good girl, let's take you through here. But it seems the stress is all too much for her. Sure, all right, Sean. Yeah, it's having a fit. Just keep your fingers away. With a fit or convulsion induced by stress, the only thing to do is wait until it passes. Well, that's it. You don't know. Does she need... Mm. Just get her in, yeah, just get her segment straight in. Some of it can just be information overload, really, that if she has been isolated in there, rather she just went, with a fit in, she could potentially start again. Poor Magic will need to be carefully monitored at the animal centre. If the dog shows any further signs of fitting, then obviously we need to uh, consider whether uh, we should be getting that uh, dog on more long-term treatment. We'll catch up with her and the other dogs soon. As you've seen, it's not always an easy job for the inspectors. But last year, over 8,000 dogs were rescued and given a second chance at life. 
playing a key role in this process are the animal centres across England and Wales, where many of the rescued dogs live and are cared for until they find their new homes. Hull Animal Centre is just one of them. Dogs from all sorts of different backgrounds are taken in by assistant manager Amanda Nightingale and her team. We get three to four dogs in a month, um, depending on rehoming. But we've been rehoming pretty successfully this year. I think we've rehomed 46 dogs so far this year. So we're not doing too bad. Good, good. That's it. There we go. Come on, then. Come on, bird. So when they first come in, they're all given a vet check. They're then all fleed, wormed, weird as well, so we can monitor the weight. Good girl, that's it. If it's not microchips, we microchip on site. Here we go, good boy. Those things are usually done within the first 24 hours of a dog coming on site, so we're giving it the best start we can, really. You are such a good girl. You are. You're beautiful. While they're here, the dogs are given plenty of attention and stimulation to help them get ready for their new homes. Oh, yeah, if you're not sweating, you're not doing it right. Here we go. This is our back paddock. It's a great space for us to be able to exercise the dogs. They can run around. We've got some agility equipment, so we can have a practice with that and to build their confidence. Come on, Bonnie. Come on. Good girl. This way. Yay, good girl. It's so good. It's a good dog. Try to get them all walking very nice on a lead, which is really important. Nobody wants a dog pulling them around. Just makes them a bit more appealing when somebody's looking for them for a home. It's nice when the public come in with an idea of what they want in their head and go away with something totally different. <laughs> Jesse. Hello, Jesse. <laughs> She, she tries to take everything, but... <laughs> we had a gentleman come in for a small dog and went home with the dog to Bordeaux, so it always works. <laughs> Inspector David Milborough has arrived with a lively three-year-old Cocker Spaniel who has just been signed over. This is Marley, a very nice, friendly dog. The, the family just weren't able to cope. This little guy needs loads more exercise than he's been getting we can find the right home. They're a really active family that are going to take them for lots of walks. Um, so, yeah, definitely the best thing for them, really. Shaky, shaky. Before Marley gets an assessment and vet check, it's playtime. A chance to burn off some of that energy. Ooh. Ooh. Just talking to the staff here, and we all reckon that by midday tomorrow, there'll be people asking about him. Just the kind of dog that is unusual to get in these, these rescue homes, so um, I think he'll be rehomed really, really quickly. He seems like a really nice dog. He does need to, need to learn a few manners, needs to learn how to walk on lead properly and that kind of thing, but that's easily done with a few treats, really. So, yeah, he's a smashing little dog. Yeah! <laughs> good boy! He's so good at that! Let's hope frisky little Marley gets taken home soon. Yeah, it's fun, isn't it? <laughs> we'll be back to check on Marley later. Now from one perky pooch to two nervous little pups. In our last series, Inspector Simon Evans rescued two very distinctive and adorable ugly puplings, Yoda and Mogwai. The six-month-old French bulldogs were dumped in a park in South Wales. What little coat they had was in a dreadful condition. They were so lifeless. They were taken to Newport Animal Centre, where they were nursed back to health. They were basically uh, collapsed when I saw them. Didn't really know if they were going to survive. Four months on, and both Yoda and Mogwai have found new homes. Smile. <laughs> Richard and Wendy Lloyd Roberts fell for Mogwai after just one look at his picture. And you can see why. When we first saw Mogwai online, it was, we, we thought he was very cute, didn't we? Straight away. He said, can you come down? So we literally just threw our coats in the car and shot down there with our son. As soon as we saw him, he was like, oh, man, this is the sweetest little man ever. 
He was jumping up to me, got on my lap. Everything seemed to fall into place. And Mogwise settled in. He likes his soft toys. He's got his, uh, his little monster uh, donut. But that doesn't taste as good as it looks. Thanks to regular meals, this little chap is now up to a healthy weight. And medicated baths have cured his skin problem. But there's one thing that's not going quite so well. Right, sit. 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 Nope, not going to, is he? Come on, sit. Sit. I don't, I'm not going to sit. Sit. Just give me it. It's either here or I give up at this point. I'll sit if you give me it. Mugs, sit. Sit. Oh, your hard work. Sit, good boy. As I say, it is work in progress with him. Come on, Mogwai enjoys his rest with his mum. Keeps me company all day. He normally has one ear up and one ear down, but I've been massaging his ear that's normally down. And when he wants to, he can keep it up now. But when he's not thinking about it, he'll, uh, it'll just flop back down. So Mogwai's happy. But what about brother Yoda? Today, the two dogs are going to be reunited for the first time since they were rehomed. But will they remember each other? Who's this? Who is it? Oh, this is lovely. So, aren't they so different? They are. Yoda's new mum, Doreen Bunch, has come along with her daughter. Oh, Lord. Oh, yeah. I can't believe how different they are, though. But something about those ears looks very familiar. I mean, he's so light, he's, he's so dark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's getting a bit spilly, though. He's a plane, though. Dear bully! <laughs> Look at that. Typical brothers. <laughs> he's quicker than you, <laughs> But they both seem very excited to see each other again. They're just amazing. I'm sure you'll agree, both siblings look superb and their lives have definitely changed for the better. It's nice to see that Yoda's found a loving family and uh, they're both going to have a happy ending. It was nice to see they both had one ear up and one ear down. Yeah. It was those ears that did it for Doreen too. She fell in love with Yoda at the animal centre in Newport. He was looking through the bars and I was looking in the bars and I thought, oh, he's beautiful. He's lovely as a delight, aren't you? They've both found forever homes. They're, they're both settled, they're both happy, and you couldn't ask for anything better, could you? No longer ugly puplings. It's a brilliant outcome for these two beautiful bulldogs. Coming up, Anna the Sharpay goes under the knife to give her a pain-free future. I hope she's a lot happier after this. It's been really sore for her. And things are looking up for the dogs rescued from a squalid house. He's lovely. He's lovely. Yeah, you're going to enjoy your stay here. <laughs> Lindsay Taylor has just rescued four dogs from a filthy and hazardous house and is on her way to RSPCA Halifax. There's a couple of issues, but they seem reasonably healthy. So happy that those dogs won't be spending another night in conditions like that that are just so awful. Two of the dogs have already been rushed to the centre, including Magic, who is the biggest worry as she had a fit outside the house. Rather she just went, because with a fit in, she could potentially start again. Dog trainer and behaviour advisor Mike Cuthbert has been monitoring her. Right then, you was my favourite, wasn't you? She's not showing any signs of the seizure now, so but we'll, we'll have staff that will come down and check on that. Yeah. Magic was extremely stressed, but she looks a lot happier now. She was a little bit nervous coming in, 
Although then, when we did get underneath, her skin isn't quite as good as it looks. Susie, who was found shut in a bedroom, was also anxious. All right, sweetheart. She'll need lots of love and attention. Bless her. Good girl. Been very good. Hopefully, a new lease of life now. Hello. With Susie and Magic settling in, Lindsay can deal with the other two dogs from the property. Good boy. Friendly lad Bruce was wandering around in the dirty and cluttered downstairs rooms. Good boy, up here. So this is Bruce. He seems to be the most confident. He's got quite a nick on his ear, actually. There's a good chance that that could be a nick from another dog. I mean, the nice thing is that he's, obviously his temperament's wonderful uh, because we're all strange to him. Um, and there's quite a few of us in the room. He's lovely. He's lovely. Yeah, you're going to enjoy your stay here. Bring the next one. Yeah. You ready? The second dog, Beethoven, is still wary. Yay, sweet, it's your turn. It's your turn. Let's get you out. Hey, don't worry, sweetie. Eh? You're going to come with me. Oh, his tail's tucked fully under. You don't need to worry. It's OK, mate. You're in safe hands now. The dog's obviously really scared. See, he's lip licking a lot, which is a sign to us that he's very stressed. He's also shaking, lowered his body. So all the signs that he's obviously a very distressed dog at this moment in time. To add to his problems, his coat doesn't look good at all. Oh, that's bad skin. I bet that's really itchy. We'd suspect that this possibly is a flea allergy. Just like the others, Beethoven is given flea drops to help relieve the problem. This will kill any fleas that are on the dog. Right, shall we pop you back down? A bit of TLC seems to have already worked wonders for him. I mean, even his, his confidence has come round just in these few minutes, hasn't it? Yeah, he's totally different now. And those treats are helping too. Oh, you do like these, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing but the best Good here. Boy. Is that nice? Are you enjoying He's that? He's enjoying that, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the skin was not good on all these dogs. They'll all end up on treatment, particularly for the next few weeks till we can get them up to health again, really. Now, Lindsay needs to make some inquiries into who actually owns these dogs. Bruce and Susie are both registered to someone else, and the occupant has refused to sign over his two dogs, Beethoven and Magic. In the meantime, Lindsay's just pleased that they've all been treated and they're out of that house. They've got a nice, clean environment to be in. They've got clean, fresh water in a clean bowl. I can go home now happy knowing that these dogs have been well looked after now. We'll catch up on their progress later. Dogs come in all shapes, sizes and breeds. But for some pedigree pooches, the distinctive look they've got through selective breeding can cause health problems. In breeds with large heads, like bulldogs, the mothers can struggle to give birth naturally, so may need a caesarean section to deliver their pups. Dog de Bordeaux can suffer with hip dysplasia and arthritis. And those with wrinkled faces, like Sharp Hays, are at higher risk of infections and inflammation of the skin. Sharp Hays are also prone to another problem, an abnormal rolling inwards of the eyelids, which causes the lashes to rub on the globe of the eye, or eyeball. This condition, called entropion, is very painful. Breeding dogs with less excessive skin helps reduce its severity, but for those already affected, the best option is surgery. Today, Sarah Sanderson, who runs a Sharpe charity in Yorkshire, has brought rescue dog Anna to have her much-needed op. When Anna was handed over to the charity by her owner eight months ago, she was underweight and had inflamed skin. But thanks to the right care, now her only problem is her eyes. Hello. Hi, Keith. The procedure will be carried out by vet Keith Leonard. Come on, then. Up we go. Three, two, one. Oh. There we go. Hello, Anna, darling. Let me come round and have a look and see what she has. You can see it's discharged as well. Isn't it? Yeah. And she's blinking a lot, isn't she? She's been born with eyelids that turn inside out and then they start to rub. 
on the, on the cornea. And that's constantly painful, constantly irritable. With Anna today, we're just gonna try straightforward surgery around the eyes to see if we can correct that. Unfortunately, if this problem is left untreated, it can lead to perforation. So worst case scenario, the globe can actually burst through an ulcer, but it also can just lead to a complete overgrowth of the eye with uh, connective tissue. Blindness is a very common sequel to this. So we have to treat it when we see it. Anna is prepped for the procedure. Right, thank you. So what's happening is that the eyelid's rolling in. The eyelid margin, if I roll that out, should be out there, really. There's the edge of the eyelid. And what happens with all the extra skin is it just rolls in and rubs against the eye. We want to turn that eyelid margin out. So what I'm going to do in this situation is I'm going to remove some skin from below and from above, and that will tension from here to pull this eyelid out. Now Anna's anaesthetised, Keith is ready to start the delicate operation. So I'm going to take a piece of skin out from here and a little bit from here. He starts with the top eyelid. I'd look away now if you're squeamish. I use my finger quite happily under there. The hardest part of this is deciding how much to take off. There isn't a measurement that you can read in a book to say this is how much, and that's where this operation can need repeating at times. OK, that's my first one. So you can see we've taken a section of skin out. And when I sew this up, it should take that up there and roll this eyelid out more. Keith sews up the lid with dissolvable stitches. It's an upper lid done, and you can start to see now the eyelid is turning out. Now I'm going to do the lower lid next. To get this corrected, and you really do need to have to take quite a bit of skin away. After stitches in the bottom lid, Anna's left eye is done. Keith now has to do the same procedure on her right eye. This is such a big problem now. There are some vets who are actually doing this procedure on Sharpays every day. They maybe do two adults and a couple of litters of puppies every day. In young puppies that are growing, we stitch the eyelids open with the tacking procedure. And when they're fully grown, like Anna, we can then do more permanent entropian surgery. So this is the last one now. OK. Sew that up. Right. And that's the last stitch. That's it done. And now for the big reveal. Anna's brand new healthier eyelids. So much better. I hope she's a lot happier after this. Um, I think it's been really frustrating for her and sore. In the recovery room, Anna is fitted with a buster collar. She'll need to wear it for 10 days while her eyes heal. It's so different, she does, yeah. Hello, Hi, you see those pretty eyes? Once the collar comes off, it just takes a little bit of time for the swelling, inflammation and scarring to settle down. But within two weeks, she should be a lot more comfortable. So how has Anna's outlook on life changed? Well, here to tell us are her new owners, Justin and Danny Marston. How's she getting on with her eyes now, then? Absolutely fine. Seem to be yeah. normal. Yeah. Can you can see? see? You can see, can't yeah, you? Yeah, she can. What do they do? Do they have an eye test, like a big board with letters on? Yeah, of course they do. D-O-G, C-A-T. <laughs> Are you joining us at the table? Yeah. yeah. Right, so, 
Eye test working. Oh, yes, you've seen her mate from half a mile away. There's nothing wrong with your eyesight <laughs> at all. No. So how did you settle upon Anna? What was it that made you go for her? I just took one look at her and I thought, she's just absolutely gorgeous. So I just had to have her. Yeah. But now, a uh, real character's coming out now, so she's settling in absolutely it's good fine. fun to have her around. She is, yeah, she's quite funny. And how do you <laughs> feel about giving Anna a fresh start? Uh, just wonderful. She's just so loving. She's got her own personality. You know, she's just perfect for us. Oh, well, she's gorgeous, isn't she? Now for some good news on another lively pooch. Come on, Marley. Earlier we met boisterous cocker spaniel Marley. Shaky, shaky. He was signed over by his owner, who couldn't cope with him, and taken to Hull Animal Centre. We all reckon that by midday tomorrow there'll be people asking about him. Just the kind of dog that is unusual to get in these, these rescue homes, so um, I think he'll be rehomed really, really quickly. Yeah, yo. And sure enough, just five weeks later, Live Wire Marley has found his forever home. He's enjoying his new life with Ian Goldie and family, including nephew Josh. We saw him on the RSPCA site and we fell in love with him straight away. And we thought, well, that must be the dog for us. Settled in really well. Good dog. His character is really good. He's, he's brilliant. He's just so relaxed. He's so chilled out. Jumped out. Has hyperactive Marley actually been tamed? Must be all that exercise he's getting now. He loves his walks. Now he's been walking and that. Let's have a lot of fun. Like, like let him go and he takes off like, like a madman. He goes, <laughs> really crazy. He gets so excited, his tail goes like an helicopter. Yep, that's the Marley we know and love. There he goes. There, there he goes. goes. There's the helicopter. <laughs> Funny, isn't he? As well as his regular walks, Marley also likes to take a dip, but so far, just in the shallow end. You don't like going out with depth. Getting further in, don't he? Getting braver and braver going in. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. oh. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't want to go that deep, he says. Marley also has a new playmate, fellow spaniel Mac. Mac belongs to Ian's sister-in-law, Gillian, so the two have now become best buddies. He's a lot faster than Marley. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mac, Mac will get the ball before him, cos he's Mr Slow. <laughs> <laughs> they love each other. They love coming here and just chasing the ball, don't they? Nice to see Marley get on with other dogs and that. Alec, come in. This lovable chap, who was given up by his previous owner, is now at the heart of a big family. Lord of the manor now. His future's going to be great. He's going to be buddy going on long walks, spoiled rotten. Life of <laughs> yeah, Marley, yeah, definitely, yeah. Good on you, Marley. You deserve it. Coming up. What's next for the four dogs rescued by Inspector Lindsay Taylor? Oh, it smells so much better. <laughs> At RSPCA Halifax, Lindsay and Sean are reviewing the case of the four dogs seized from the squalid house. With the occupant under investigation, detailed paperwork for each dog is vital. You've got the boarding records, yeah. the weights, the welfare forms, the behaviour forms. Yeah, that's brilliant. Observations, so everything's in there. That's just what we need. A lot of what's in here is very important from my point of view, um, because I'm an independent uh, expert. So from that point of view, how do I know that the dogs are any better in RSPCA care than they were in the house? The answer to that is obvious. Um, but it's a question that I might get asked by a defence solicitor. Health-wise, how have they been? They've been good, but they've all had really chronic skin problems, which we've found is related to the food. Uh, right. So we put them all on a hypoallergenic diet, they're, they're much better on that. 
First up is 11 year old Bruce. Hello. Hello, my guy. Let's just try and get that there. That is perfect. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, I smell so much better. <laughs> Also less pongy are five-year-olds Beethoven. They just seem so much happier. And Susie. Hello, Susie. Hello. Hello. Yeah, you feel, um, just, just the fur, it just feels so soft Hello. and nice to stroke. That dog's confidence is still not 100% yet, but it's significantly better than it was. But what about six-year-old Magic, who had a seizure when she was rescued? Yeah, it's having a fit. Just keep your fingers away. There we go. When we took her out, I think it was just... Everything was just too much, right. and that spilled her over That's into awesome. a fit. Information overload, I think. Good girl. Have you had any we issues? Have had any repercussions of that? So it's looking positive for magic, too. Just, just a lot more so. relaxed, aren't they? And confident yeah. as well. Well, just nothing to fear now, have they? That's no. it. See you later. See you later. Very pleased uh, with their progress. They're looking uh, physically and mentally much better than they were. It's good news for the dogs, but the case is far from over. While doing an investigation, you've got to stay really focused and determined, and you can't leave a single stone unturned, really. Right. It's really important that I find everyone that's involved and, and hold them accountable for their actions or lack of actions. Lindsay has discovered that Susie and Bruce's registered owner has even more dogs living at her address, which is a serious worry. I just want to get the rest of the animals out and into safety because I'm so concerned about their, about their welfare and about their lives. As Lindsay considers these other animals to be at risk, she needs to get a warrant for the female owner's address. Hopefully we can get a warrant as soon as possible and then we can go to this other address and get the animals out. Find out what Lindsay discovers next as the case continues. Next time on The Dog Rescuers. Deprived of water and living in a urine-soaked house, six dogs are in jeopardy. You've been shot in there. Do you need a drink? Come on, then. And two tiny abandoned puppies are hand-reared by an inspector. Age-wise, we were guessing probably only a day old, maybe 48 hours maximum. Obviously, all squealing, looking for mom. They were so helpless. <laughs>